Mark's computer. Hello, everybody. It is Melanie, and this is our April online team Zoom. Um, it's a way for us to connect all across the country and when we get folks again outside the country as well. And I'm, I'm contemplating doing this more often so that people get more comfortable. I have muted some folks. Know that you can unmute yourself because I have a few things that I want to talk to you about, but mostly I want to chat. I want to find out what's working and what you want to know about. And we have on the call, oh, I always want to call this a call, but it's on the Zoom, on the meeting, um, we have star director, Heather Lambert. If you're in my same zoo, she, uh, view, my same view. Uh, she's in the upper left-hand corner and right below her on my view is director Joelle Drake. And um, I've asked them if they have some stuff to share that they are welcome to and I'm unstable again. Oh no. Guys, if you have your Wi-Fi on, you need to turn it off. <laughs> I know, but they might not have listened to you. Someone's like, I already talked to them. Okay. So um, if you want to unmute yourself and just say hello or what you want to maybe talk about, you're welcome to do that now. Um, we are recording this. Do not get all freaked out about it because it's just our team that watches it and we are one great big family and we're all here to help each other. Hello. <laughs> Such I'm being paged from the other room again, still. They're paging you? <sighs> yes. Christopher. Christopher? Yes. Mom! Mommy! 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 It's like a parrot. Mommy! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, and we lost Wanda. She'll probably catch the recording or come back in. I don't know. Is there a delay now or, or am I stable again? You're good for now. <laughs> I have the world's worst Wi-Fi. And it's not even the cheap connection either. Uh, I don't know. I got a pretty good worst Wi-Fi connection, so we could have a competition. There. Are you stable? Uh, Right now. <laughs> yes. uh, oh. I'm the only one home, and there's nothing else on in the house. So. Ron says that we your <laughs> connection is unstable because the, the moose uses it up there. <laughs> Actually, we have more deer than anything else. Mm. Oh, dear. We have, we have high-speed business internet. Oh, so that's the next level, is to go to business level. Which it is for me is a hundred bucks a month, ninety nine dollars a month, and I'm it like, is. oh my, God. <laughs> it is a hundred dollars a month, but it's a business write off and a tax deduction, mm -hmm. and Dave uses it for his work. Yeah, it's not available where I am. <laughs> 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 so you're saving money. Yeah. All right, so I know that Heather Poulin is listening in. Do you, I'm gonna unmute Heather Poulin. And who was it, did you say? Angela. Angela, good job. So just know that I can't remember my own name half the time. So yeah. Ladies, welcome. I unmuted you in case you couldn't. Oh, maybe they can't unmute the same way that we can because you're on a phone. It should be a button, though, I would imagine. I don't know. They can talk now, though. Hi. Hi. See? <laughs> it works. How are you? What do you want to know? Who are you? <laughs> what do you mean, who are we? <laughs> See, they thought they were just going to call in and listen quietly in the background, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Well, you can totally do that. You can totally do that. One of you I know has had the pool in and see Angela, right? Yes, I'm Angela. Yes. Hi, Angela. <laughs> you don't understand how proud I am whenever I remember something like that. 
Names are important. Yeah. Yes, they are, but sometimes they're hard to remember. <laughs> so, can, I'm going to tell you a quick story, and maybe you'll remember this. I don't know if I've ever even told Joelle and Heather this story. Now, long ago, I believe I was 18 years old, which, you know, you're 18. You should have brain cells then, right? Um, I'm working in a department store, Ames department store, and I'm the lead cashier because my fingers were fast and I was friendly. So, um, and it's, it's busy. So there's a really long line and I, I pay attention to the first three people. I look up and smile, but I always pay attention to the first, you know, the three people that are closest. And so I look up and I smile and I recognize somebody that's like six or seventh in line. And I'm like, I recognize that person, but it wasn't coming to my mind. So I keep taking care of people and the person is right in front of me and I'm like, oh, hi dad. <laughs> <laughs> true story, uh, true story. So if ever I forget your name, just know, <laughs> I can't help it. I, I forget my own father's name. <laughs> so anyhow. Is there anything that you ladies would like to know while we have you? Um, I'm just anxious to listen to see what I can learn. Oh, perfect. Perfect. We like learning. Angela just started. Angela just joined. Um, and I think, you know, like you said, just listening to any tips you guys may have or whatever when someone's just starting out. Yes, that was how the pool, by the way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, did Heather or Joelle, did you have any light bulb moments that you wanted to share with these fine ladies? <laughs> I'm like, the bulbs are dim tonight. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Man. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So new consultant, um, you've added this new business to your probably already busy life. Um, I would say one tip I would give right off the bat is to figure out how much time you're ready to invest and when those times are that you're going to focus and do the things that you need to do to grow your business. Um, I like a planner with numbers in it, for example. Um, so this is my planner and I have time intervals. So I write in the things I have to do. So if you have other responsibilities and that way I can visually see when my blocks of time are that I have available that I can assign to focus on sensing. Um, and so I think that's so important to, cause it can get overwhelming when you first jump in and you're, you're like going crazy and you're talking to everybody and it just becomes everything all the time. And that very quickly gets exhausting. Um, or on the other hand, you feel like you're working all the time and you're not really, and maybe you need more time. Maybe you just need focused time. So I think it's real important to take a look at your life and your schedule and, figure out how much time are you ready to devote and when are those times that you can really focus in and do the things that are important. Good There's advice. my tip. <laughs> so here's something that I learned from Orville as well. So once you figure out what your work hours are, let's say you have a party scheduled and Lord forbid this happens, they say, oh, I can't do it, not doing it, somebody died, you know, whatever, the party's not happening. So if you've slotted two hours for that party, it's not necessarily time to go, whoop, whoop, I got two free hours. Um, it's time to take those two hours and work on either booking more parties, following up with past hosts, following up with customers, just whatever you want to do that's business, um, focused and it's going to be intentional time for you to build your business that much more because that those are your work hours 
And then you can feel also good when you say, these are not my work hours. Is it, this is not time for Sensi. This is time for me just to hang out with my kids, for me to have whatever you want to do with your time. And that's important too. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> oh, Tucker's still awake. Hi, <laughs> yep. How are you feeling? Good. You feel better? Yeah. 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 Is no, Tucker three yet? No, July. In July. So we have yep. a couple ladies who are on phones and can't see his sweet little face. Oh, um, yep. Hi, everybody. So, <laughs> Danielle, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to stay, stay on very long because you're working on nope. getting Tuck to sleep. Yep. However, um, we have a brand new consultant on. <coughs> and he's here to grab some tips for what you would do for getting started and um as ron has said it sounds like our light bulbs are kind of dim tonight <laughs> so don't feel pressured that you have to have this like hugely bright light bulb right now but do you have uh -huh. um for a new person yeah um Booking parties, casually, but making um, I just started coordinating some events, which is going to be um, starting with the local Legion Hall and posting that you want vendors. It's really not that expensive, and coordinating them yourself is pretty fairly easy. Um, fundraisers are huge. Um, I feel like I'm missing basics. Yeah. Shooting star, essential star. So hitting those goals that Sensi throws at you. Yes. I don't know where that's coming from. That's not my house. <laughs> that's my house. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, really, Heather? <laughs> I didn't hear it before. Yes, that's my house. Yep wild boys so yeah just hitting those goals is a great way to start off so just work so you shared a tip and hopefully i'm not like stealing stealing your ideas and sharing where i'm not supposed to oh she's, oh, she's unstable there she goes I'm you're unstable. back i'm back okay you're back you're back Me? so <laughs> so i watched your zoom no your your live earlier with your team so yep Danielle happened to notice a paint night, and it was a fundraiser paint night. Do you want to tell them about that? Um, I was just on a community page, and it said uh, they were having a paint night for the project graduation, and I've done a fundraiser at a paint night before that was a fundraiser, so I just reached out to the coordinator and asked if they would be interested if I set up boy yeah. um, donated and she presented it to the committee and got back to me and said they'd love that so just by noticing it out there on but so, so and the one thing that you added that i thought was huge um because for new people there's there's a tool lot of word that they're afraid of what's the worst thing that could happen all right the worst thing they're gonna say no right and right. and then but but nothing ventured nothing gained so right if you don't ask the answer is always no so right. that was a huge tip because people are always saying how can i get to stuff how can i how do you get these different events or fundraisers hi christopher i know <laughs> you're so big I yeah and Another I that was brilliant Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> now. He just um, likes to see himself on screen, so he'll behave himself if it's pointed at him. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm listening. <laughs> okay. You listen. I, I am. I'll take you out of the hot seat. Okay. Joelle, 
you had an event this past weekend and what happened at that event that so having to do with the vendors so i, I hate putting people on the hot spot so i have conversations with people or i i hear something and then i i want to get them to talk about it i don't want to talk about it you need to talk about it so talk about your event and, and uh, well this place of karma <laughs> Karma, mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's interesting is, uh, so to go back, go back a little bit is uh, what, just like Danielle said, I was online looking, looking for events, and um, I saw one in my area, sort of. <laughs> There's not much in my area, and I just asked, you know, I I messaged the coordinator and I said, hey, do you have a Sensi consultant yet? And they didn't. So, you know, all you have to do really is just be looking, be on the lookout, be, you know, open-minded and be looking for things. So anyway, um, the thing that I liked the most, although it was a, um, you know, a, a good event as far as, you know, I got some sales and I got some leads, um, the, the vendor, people were super, super nice. And I did a lot of networking. And like the Avon lady that was sitting next to me, she does a lot of events and she even messaged um, the next event she was at, uh, going to, I mean, um, she messaged the person in charge and asked if they had a Sensi lady yet. Like she was helping me find other um, events in the area to go to. And I was like, okay, <laughs> thanks. So apparently she liked me. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, but it was really nice because I've had a hard time since I moved up here, um, really finding more things in my area and more people and building my business up in this area because um, I'm really social. I'm a really social person and I need to, I need people. I need to, I need to be, I need live people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need real live people. And as much as I could do stuff online and meet people online, I, I have, I'm in Facebook groups and such. Um, I need to be with people. And around here, you know, we have, you know, a general store and a post office. <laughs> I think that's all we have. Um, so it's hard for me to, you know, meet people in, you know, within, I don't know, a few miles. We don't, I mean, the next place is like 15 minutes away as far as like any stores. And that's like another general store. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it was pretty exciting to have somebody, um, you know, and there was another, another, um, two, two other vendors that were, you know, just as nice, equally as nice. So I was pretty excited about that. I love it. But I was, I was also going to say as far as, um, new people and J and Danielle kind of touched on that a little bit, but as far as when you join, I think goals and it kind of goes along with what Heather said about setting, you know, your, your time and your schedule, um, setting your goals since he sets up some goals for you to meet too, but I mean, it has to be personal. It, kind of, it goes along with your why, like how come you're, you know, why are you doing it? What, what, what sets your, you know, your soul on fire kind of thing. You know, why, why did you join Sensi and, and what's going to drive you to do it and um, take the Sensi goals and, and, and also your own personal goals. And then obviously decide how much you want to work it and then go from there because that's what's really going to drive your business um, from there on out, whether it's, you know, a, um, a monthly goal or, a, you know, a long-term goal. Who else is on the phone? Who's listening besides us for? So Heather Poulin, who's one of my front line and her brand new recruit of, I want to say, well, she joined in April. So it's, she's, um, Angela. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, <good job. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hope you remembered. <laughs> oh my. So my, I started to say the A and my mind went blank and I'm like, I have that trouble at host house too, just so you know. <laughs> Play the know the host hostess game and you forget the host's name. I'm like, wow. Yeah. 
Um, I think you're right with goals. So here's the next thing that I would build on that. Um, and it goes along with also what Heather said, write it down. Because sometimes when, when you have questions, when you have ideas, 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 I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> ideas. <laughs> My mom, ideas. <laughs> write them down. Because if you're anything like me, 2.2 seconds later, it could be a brilliant thing and it's gone. Or it's something that you know is important that you want to know about and it's gone. And don't be afraid to ask because we are one big family. And that's one of the reasons why I started the Believers and Achievers page because I was getting texts all the time, which I don't mind. However, it's not all about me. Um, you can post questions on there or ideas on there and you um, can get answers or feedback. I did say idea. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so just know that when you write things down, they tend to happen. Because if you don't write them down, it's not, it's the likelihood of it happening is minuscule. And I'm sure that there's a percentage. Um, Mel, you'd be proud of me today. I'm proud of you every day. No, another good thing for new people to know. So forever and ever, I've been handing out samples and just handing them out. And I have gotten a name here, there, here and there. Today, I went, I talked to some waitresses, and then I went to the dollar store. And I, I said, like, Sensi, yep, and oh, my son just broke my warmer. I said, oh, perfect timing. I said, there's tons of new ones. And I said, can you write down your name and phone number? For I am super. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll follow up with her tomorrow. So, I never do that. I always forget. And then I think about it afterwards and I'm like, no. So that's so important to, if you give something out to get their information so you can follow up. So, so the ball's in your court. Right. You know, so if you, and I'm not that big of a sports player, but if you, if you just leave it one-sided, which is where many people will start just to get comfortable because it's scary to even pass somebody a sample um, initially. However, once you get comfortable with that, or maybe even challenge yourself that much more and um, go ahead and ask for their name so that you can follow up. And that's really how I say it. And I usually put it right in my phone right away because if I don't, then I might forget or be too chicken because when I put it in my phone, I send them a text message right away. And then the next day, I, when I know that they've already received the text message, I will send them another text. Hey, it was super nice chatting with you. Did you have a chance to check out that sample or the catalog or whatever? And what did you think? Leave it open-ended with that. What did you think? Yep. Yeah. I am super proud of you. I'm proud that you said that too. Oh, did he pass out? Not yet, but I think we're <laughs> So I was on the director's call and there was a director who was um, talking about just passing out samples everywhere, but she was never, she never talked about reaping the reward of gathering the people's information and that is just it's a huge tip good job Thanks. yeah now angela oh i'm so proud of myself i'm going now uh, i can i can <laughs> tell you a tip that i learned from another superstar director is put tiny you know those itty bitty square post-its that you can get at the dollar tree for four in a package so four for a buck and put those right on top of catalogs or whatever you might be um, passing out and have a pen handy. And so when you're getting ready to pass them that, just have them jot down their name and phone number and let them know that the reason why you're taking that is because we know that life gets busy and things get lost and you want to make sure that you can follow up with them or whatever to find out what they think, what they want, um, if they have questions. Which it can be scary, but once you've done it a couple times, it's really not bad. Right. Hmm. Nice. This is good stuff. Um, so here's my thing that 
I learned, who did I learn? I don't So I learn things from many people all the time. There's inspiration everywhere. And um, getting a fancy buddy as fast as you can is important. Hold on. Getting a sensi buddy as fast as you can is, is really, really important. And what I mean by that is somebody that you know that loves sensi probably as much, if not more than you do, and saying, hey, I'm looking for somebody who wants to do what I do. And, and we can learn together. So one thing that holds people back from sponsoring is, A, the word of sponsor. I don't, I don't think <laughs> you say so no one. Fun. Oh, I'm unstable. It's not me. It's Heather. Everybody else isn't moving. There it is. <laughs> so what holds people back oftentimes from sponsoring, for one, it's the word sponsor. That, that gets scary all by itself. The next thing is they're afraid that they don't know anything. And my answer to that is you get to grow together. And you, t you can look... You can feed off each other's energy. Hold on, I gotta hold my hands up higher. Because that's that's what people do. They they um they develop synergy and it they propel themselves that much further. So I would recommend that you do that. And once you've done it, it makes it that much easier. So not only do you have a sensi buddy to grow with, but you also have a oh, the other thing for knowledge, you have a whole family. You can post. I don't know where that noise is coming from. You can post. <laughs> you can post questions. Um, you can um, call or text or just there's everybody available to, to everybody. And it doesn't have to be exactly your sponsor. It doesn't even have to be um, somebody who's in your direct directorship. It can be anybody and they will help you. So. That's my, my biggest aha moment whenever somebody joins and, and light bulb. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty bright with that one is getting that sensey buddy as fast as you can. Cause it will help to bring momentum to your team as well. And when you, people will do what you do most of the time. So when, when you <laughs> find a sensey buddy, your buddy's got to find a buddy and your, your team is going to grow faster. <laughs> Did I come back get stable again? It does. It's not even coming across my screen. Heather will freeze up, and <laughs> it's usually not in the right spot. You know, it's, just, it's noticeable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Right. <laughs> That's a great picture. <laughs> oh, that was cool. What was that? Was it my TV that just came on? Could be. I'll go wherever I want and do whatever I want. Liz Rose the hand. He's out. He's <laughs> out. Look at this. <gasps> That's yeah. the best. I so totally miss that. Hmm. Aw. That your voice has lulled him to sleep. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Nice work. <laughs> we'll have to zoom more often when it's his bedtime. Mm. Yeah. I guess it helps. Uh, so one of the things that I get inspiration from, and you're going to think I'm kind of crazy, but, but music, has anybody been to see The Greatest Showman? No. Nope. So if you have Spotify or YouTube or something like that, I have Spotify, the free version, because I'm cheap. Um, so listen to the, um, just type in The Greatest Showman, and it's a, it's a musical. It's recently been released. Um, you know... Hugh Jackman. Is it Jackman? Yes, I said it right. <laughs> he's the one who plays Wolverine. So he's one of the main characters and he sings. Anyhow, the music that is inside um, this is amazing and it fits right in with our business. And I think of when, when we're getting ready to go to a party, it's the greatest show. It's so, don't you don't want it. <laughs> 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 but it talks about dreaming um and it just so that's the next tip so you we talked joelle talked about the why so don't be afraid to dream 
because so many people settle for what they see in front of them and what they have right now. And to, to imagine to have more, whatever that more is for you, that is big. And I love saying dream big and dream in color. And what I mean by dreaming in color is really put the detail behind that dream. So maybe, so one of the things that I want, and I've got to figure out just what I want, um, is, oh, yes, I was going there. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know I have not had any wine tonight. I'm drinking ice water with lemon. So <laughs> I'm funky. It's just me in the raw. <laughs> in the raw? Ron says it's because she's unstable. <laughs> Aren't we all? True story. Oh. Yeah. So you don't have to be unstable to be part of this business, but it sure does help. <laughs> <laughs> um, True. I wish I could see their faces. <laughs> Heather. <laughs> so Heather Poulin is a, a recruit that came from a home party. And I, um, I was partying with her sister and then she had some basket parties with me and decided to join. So she, she knows the full on version of Melanie Okay. <laughs> on stage and off stage and what you get is what you get. <laughs> is she from Sumner or Buckfield? Heather Poulin? Um, I don't know where Buckfield is, but she's in freedom. So it's near unity. Kind oh, of different. It's a different girl. I was thinking of a different Heather. I thought her last name was Poolin, actually, that I've known forever. But it, it's got to be a different one. Could be a different Heather Poolin. There's probably more than one. <coughs> I think it must be. Um, no. <laughs> Does she have children or just stash. have a baby? Hmm? Does she have, did she just have a baby not too long ago? No. No, nope, different one. Hey, this is your girl. <laughs> oh, and there's Heather's baby. I should get Aiden down here. He can crawl on my lap. <laughs> Where's Lucy, Joel? <laughs> I know, right? She's on my sense. She stole my sensi blanket off my lap, and she's got it on the floor, and she's on it. Yeah, I need another sensi blanket. They always steal them. Yeah. Well, they're yeah. super soft, right? Yeah. Oh, and we lost Danielle. No, we didn't lost, lose Danielle. We lost either Heather or Angela. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting excited about California. I know. Yes, I keep calling it California. I need to buy a plane ticket. Melanie's stuck again. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep calling it California. Because Christopher. Again. There you are. He can say it right now. Huh? So I keep calling it California. <laughs> Wait. Oh my word. <laughs> you need to talk to our children. Somebody's got something going. <laughs> uh, go confiscate all the devices. <laughs> I don't think we can. We have too many devices. Get a pillowcase. <laughs> yeah. So Ron just caught Grace. Uh. Oh, but the a, big uh, one is if if Aiden's on his got his Xbox powered on, it's, um, that yeah. takes up all kind of Wi-Fi. Yep. Ron made us cookies. Do you want one? Yes. Peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Nice. Huh? Look, I'll tell you how it tastes. Okay. Oh, it's crunchy on the outside. And soft on the inside, and I think he even either sprinkled sugar on it or rolled it in sugar. <laughs> it's even got the little four marks. Oh, nice! I like the crisscross applesauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I know. Yeah. If lost... I had an off, it would be a mess. If you had a what? Yeah, it would. <laughs> if I had an office like Heather's, I don't think it would be a mess. Yes, it would. Doesn't matter. I walk in mine. It has. It it's, a, it's all hidden. The mess well, is hiding. That's. I don't have thing. any. I don't have any. I don't have any room to walk in? There's a dryer in there in the closet. There's a hot water heater and something else. So there's no. I, floor space. I actually just redid the whole thing and I took out two trash bags full of stuff and got rid of a bunch of junk. So mm, yeah. <laughs> this is you wanna you wanna see my okay so this is my this is the real me. <laughs> <laughs> the overflowing trash can. Mm. Oh in the, in the corner. Yeah. That's just you being green not wanting to waste the trash bag space. Now that's me being lazy and not getting up off of my button and in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need, I need, we need to build an addition. <laughs> I need a real office. I need to hoe out. I did my best growing at the kitchen table. <laughs> so that's where I am is at the kitchen table. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I clean it off, and then I get it stuff all over it, and then I clean it off, and I get stuff all over it. Yeah, well, I use my my ottoman in the living room more more often than not. Nick does not like that; he hates having stuff ev anywhere in the house. He's just Mister Mister Neat. So I shove it in the office, but I don't do it in a very organized manner. Part of, that's my problem. <laughs> that's all me. <laughs> I just put it in the office and shut the door. It's okay. All right. Let's talk about development. What is it that you are reading or doing or watching that is helping you right now? I have been reading lots of books. Lots and lots. Um, the biggest one for me right now is Gretchen Rubin. R-U-B-I-N is her name. Um, she's great to follow on Facebook. She's a lot of quick videos that talks about some of her concepts and things. Um, her first big book was called The Happiness Project, where she decided she was going to take a year of her life and mm, find out how to be happier. What could she do that would make her happier? What are some things? So she did a bunch of research and tried a whole bunch of different stuff um, and wrote a book about what works and what didn't and why it worked and why it didn't and what happened. Um, in that, she introduced the four tendencies. Um, and then wrote a whole book on the four tendencies. So um, that's the most recent one that I've, well, sort of. Um, the most recent one of hers that I've written, <laughs> read, <laughs> just finished one yesterday. <laughs> um, and that one goes into the four tendencies more specifically. And for me, um, it has given a lot of clarity around my motivation and what I do and what I don't do and why and um, helped me to kind of think of things in a different way to make myself do more things that I want to get myself to do <laughs> if that makes sense um, so, the four sense. <laughs> so the four tendencies are basically um, four categories of people um, and how they respond to expectation both out um, external expectations, so what your friends, family, um, work, life, society, you know, thinks you should be doing, and what you personally is your inner expectation is what you feel like you want to do or what you should be doing. Um, and so there are four main ways that people tend to react to that expectation. Um, so the first one is upholders. And they respond very well to both um, internal and external expectations. So they're very good at setting a schedule. If they make a rule for themselves, they find it pretty easy to stick to it. 
if they say, hey, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and this is what I'm going to do, then they're going to do that. Um, so they're, they are a lot easier at um, developing new habits. Um, I'm a little jealous about that, but um, then there, um, there are very few people that are upholders. It's a smaller group. Most people are obligers or questioners. Questioners need they only respond to internal expectation and not to external expectation. So you can't tell a questioner, um, you can't say to a questioner, you need to do this. They're going to be like, no, because <laughs> that's external expectation. But if you say you need to do this because this, 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 and this, and you give them all the information, then they can make an internal um, realization and say, yeah, okay. All right, now I believe I do need, I've gotten all the information, I can make a decision and on my internal expectations, my internal mind is telling me that I should do it and so I will. So until they got all the information, so questioners often ask a lot of questions. They need a lot of information. They love to do the research and figure out the why. Why do we have to do this? I need to know why I need to do that. And if I don't know why I need to do that, I ain't doing it. And, and if you tell me why and I don't think it matters, then I ain't doing it. <laughs> um, so those are questioners. Obligers are people who respond to external um, expectations but not internal expectations. So they have a hard time taking care of themselves and doing the things that they want to do and they are very good at um, taking care of everybody else. And Wait, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-huh, and, and what other people want um, ask of them. So, uh, employees that, oh, can you do this? Can you stay one more day? Can you do, you know, just do one more thing and I really need to do this. Or, um, she gave an example of a neighbor who the, her neighbor came over and asked if she could walk her dog because that neighbor had to, you know, was tired and was already doing his part. And she said, okay, well, meanwhile, she had her own dog she needed to walk and didn't get to because she was walking around. So, um, Obligers are people that are always tending to everybody else's needs and have a hard time thinking for themselves. And then the fourth one um, are rebels who don't respond to internal or external expectations. In fact, when there are expectations of other people or of themselves, they tend to rebel and to go the opposite direction. So if um, you tell a rebel to do something, they're like, screw you, I'm gonna go do this instead. Um, um, which also means that for themselves, like if you, if so I'm a rebel, I'm a very strong rebel, I've decided. Um, if I tell myself, you can't eat ice cream, you're going to cut soda, um, you have to walk every day. No, not going to do it because <laughs> you told me to do it. Even if it was myself telling me to do it, I'm not going to do it. Um, so if there are external expectations from other people, other family, businesses, sensei, whatever, um, you tend to do the opposite, basically. Yeah, that's me. So... Um, Knowing kind of what your tendency is and figuring out how to manipulate yourself so that you will do. So for me as a rebel, I have to do it because it's my decision. I have to do it the way I want to do it, when I want to do it, because I decided I want to. Um, so I have to find ways of creating that space so that I can make that decision myself rather than someone else or some other timeline telling me to do it. And then I'm okay. I can do it all day long when it's my decision. Um, a questioner might need lots of research and information so they can buy into it. Um, obligers need an accountability partner. If obliger needs to do something or is having trouble sticking to a habit or trying something new or wants to set a goal for their business, they need an accountability partner that they're gonna answer to because they're not gonna let their partner down. They might let themselves down, but they're not going to let their partner down. So that works great for obligers, but a rebel, if I have an accountability partner, I'm going to avoid you. <laughs> I'm just not going to come talk to you. <laughs> so it, knowing what your tendency is can help you um, figure out ways to create and establish 
new habits or new behaviors that you you want to do and so her book goes into talking about um, not only the tendencies of everybody but um, how to work together with people of different tendencies um, and like with a spouse that's a different tendency or in your career different tendencies and how they work best um, so it's really good her book better than before is all about creating new habits and she talks about creating new habits um, <laughs> in line with each tendency um, and I just love the idea that it's better than before it's not perfect it's not exactly all the time it's just better than it was before and that's okay um, and so figuring out how to get the good things in your life and to be able to do those good things that make you happy more often than not so you can be better than before so um, so that's been huge for me. I've read a couple of those books now and um, just been thinking about them a lot in all different areas of my life. Past, present, and future. <laughs> but you really start to see like how, and I hear people talking and I'm like, oh, you know, they're going to try to do that. It ain't going to work because that's not their tendency. And, you know, so it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then I gave an, read another book recently called The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I'm not talking about a grade, I'll bet you. No. <laughs> and if you don't like that word, you should not read the book because it is full of them. <laughs> but it's basically figuring out how to care about things that you should care about and not care about the things you don't need to care about. It reminds Is me there a waste of yeah it's a waste of time and a waste of energy and and you have to be very particular and careful and picky about what you care about and otherwise you're just wasting your time and energy not making yourself happy who's the author of that i forget that's okay i can look it up i've it's seen a that pretty unique title i don't yeah i've seen it around <laughs> It is still not crazy. going up. Mark oh. Manson. Mark Manson. Yeah. So that was good too. Nice. Lots of good books. The Happiness Advantage. Joel, you would like that one. There's lots of statistics and stuff in it. Nice. I I want I want to say I have it in my queue or whatever because it sounds really familiar. It's fairly new, so, so I don't know. It was a pretty quick read. Yeah, I mean it had good concepts and the idea is good, um, but it didn't give me a, a lot of aha moments like Gretchen Rubin's stuff did. Mm -hmm. So, so maybe you just need to read it another time because I feel like when. When we're reading stuff, we we grab what we need for the moment, and maybe sometimes when we read it again later, I find though a lot of books they have an overall main idea concept that they're trying to get across, and then a lot of it is just repetition, just you know talking about that in different ways and giving lots of different examples, and um, I find that once I kind of understand the concept, I'm done. Like oh. my brain is like, got it. Don't have rebel. to tell me again. <laughs> I heard you the first time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I'm having a hard time with um, the mindset book too. Growth mindset. I can't, I've tried to read it three times now and I am just not able to keep going because okay. I feel like, and maybe it's because we've talked about it so much in trainings for Sensei and leadership and at reunion and everything that I've kind of heard most of the examples already. So as I'm reading, it's like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> you know, and it's again and again, again, it's the same ideas over and over again in different environments and in different examples. And so I'm feeling like I understand the concept. So I'm having a hard time continuing to read. So I'm having a tough, tough time with it too. Uh, I and I mean, I, I had it for training in Augusta. 
So yeah, like I've had it for a long time. Yeah, so I bought I it like a year ago. I had it like, gosh, when, so it was before, I think it was before I joined Sensi. Oh, wow. I bought yeah. it right after reunion when Heidi talked about it because I wanted to read it and I've tried multiple times. And I just yeah. Started. So I've, I've read, I had read some of it then and skimmed through the rest. And then again, have tried a couple times to read it since, since, yeah. Yeah. And I just can't, I've I'm having a hard I don't time. Think I've read the whole thing. I've skimmed it. I've skimmed it two or three times. I just yeah. can't. It's a tough one for me. And I don't know why I read. I mean, you read a ton. I read a ton. My first degree is language arts literature. Not funny. <laughs> I can't get through this book. What is wrong with me? Yeah. No, I've been um, feeling the same way. So I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. I feel better now. Yeah. I've made it through the first chapter, two chapters, first two chapters. I read yeah. the first two chapters like three times and I just, yeah. I'm like, I've read this already. It's a concept though. It's it really, is. It's, it it's is. Really about well, how you're viewing things and, and thinking mm -hmm. about things. Right. And that's like I said before, it was before I joined Sensi that we, I had that book, read some of that book and did some trainings on, on it. And then we're doing it now. So it's, it's great stuff. I had used it in my classroom. And so I was like, yes, yes, this is awesome. This is great stuff. I just can't get, I just can't get through this book. That's all. So yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, what's wrong with me? But it's, it's the book. So there's plenty of other, and that's, I guess what bothers me is that I love data and this, this book is all based on data. So I'm like, why, why can't I get through this book? But you know what? It talks about a lot of studies, but it doesn't have a lot of data. Well, and that's the thing. So it's based on, it's based on it. It's yes. just not, it's, but it's not, not actually in there. Right. Um, but yeah, so it's all good stuff. And I just, you know, I think just knowing, knowing the, the, the idea, the concept, you know, the, you know, how to use it, how to think about it, how to, how to use it for yourself and, and even as a leader, how to, how to um, use that to your advantage, I think. <laughs> I, I don't know how to word that. Um, <laughs> yeah. The other book I, yeah. The other book I really like still, I read a little while ago, was The Fringe Hours. That one's really great. Mm -hmm. um, just talking about using all the little bits of time in between to do little bit things. Um, even if it's not work things, even if it's things that are things that make you happy, fun things, frivolous things that seem frivolous and not purposeful, but um, it's important to get them in because that's how you keep yourself full so that you can do the real stuff later. Um, and using the, the five minutes, the 10 minutes, the, you know, little bits here and there to do stuff so that you have the time to either do the work or do the work in the time so that you have the time for the fun or the focus on the family or whatever it is. Um, so I really took a lot of messages from that too and have done some things differently being conscious of my fringe hour that I have. Yeah. What about books for new people? Um, books for new people. This one um, is actually really good. Get over your damn self. I love it. It's really good. It's um, it's no nonsense. It's no fluff whatsoever. It is down and dirty. How to build a direct sale business. Okay. So if you like that kind of thing and you really want to know about direct sales, she like gets right down to it and says, "Okay, look, this is the way it's gonna be. You want a big old business? This is what you need to." Do. Yeah. That was um. Good. So it's a good. It's pretty good, and it talks about like what to do and how to do it, not just, you know concept and idea it's mm -hmm. you know um i'm going to becca's leadership retreat on thursday and they told us to bring our one minute story and how do you if you don't know what a one minute story is look chapter four of this book and it tells you exactly how to create a one minute story and what it should have and what it shouldn't have and what it should look like and what it shouldn't look like so it gives you really specifics on what to do the right way 
How do you how do you like that in comparison to Sarah Robbins um, network? I like this one better. Yeah, network marketing. Sarah Robbins book is good. She gives a lot more um, like success examples. This is what could be, and this is what you know perfection looks like. Yeah. Um, and this book is like, look, get down and dirty and do this work. Yeah, so it comes started, from a little bit different. Place. I had just started that one, and then I started. Um, Simon, I think it's Simon Sinek, uh, Finding Your Why. Can't read that one either because I've watched too many of his videos and his videos are word for word the book. And oh. so, I, so I can just can't watch his up. videos. Just watch his videos. They, mm -hmm. it's every chapter in the book is a video. I, I'm wondering if the book was. It's more um, corporate based too than direct sales. So it's a little bit so, harder to translate. I'll have to, to look at, at the title of the book um, if this was how to find your why versus the other one is start your why start with why okay so I think start I with why find your why I got the find your why yeah one of my um, next ones is leaders eat last I'm gonna try to yeah. read that one too so I really I think liked I have it that one it broke it I've had it for a while but I haven't dived into it yet I broke it I liked it because it broke it down to you could do it for yourself and you could do it with your team. So I, I liked it a lot. Nice. Um, yeah. So now I have the get over your damn self and I'm reading three feet from gold. Three feet from gold is really good. It's yeah. very much like um, the go giver. Very similar type of story mm -hmm. with a similar message. Um, I liked, um, the year of yes is really good. It's not direct sale business for us based at all, but the, um, general idea of it is saying yes to opportunities when they come to you and being aware and looking out for them. And I think that is important to our business is while you're out and about and doing whatever to be aware of opportunities and when they present themselves to say yes to them whether you're scared of it or not um and so that was had a good message and it was written in a it's written by the um lady that writes Grey's Anatomy and Scandal and all those tv shows um she's the writer nice. the author so it comes from a very entertaining place I've been into videos lately. I can't. Videos keep, are good too. But I can't keep my mind like focused <clears throat> for much more than five minutes, you know? So like finding like a Will Smith video here, a Gary mm -hmm. Vee video there, um, listening just to little snippets. And I find that I get more and it gets me, it gets me going and I need mm -hmm. it get me going. <laughs> Gary V is good for that. Um, I, like I love um, Kelsey Humphreys. Okay. Have you seen my quick pep talks from Kelsey Humphreys? Some she does. Them. Yeah. So she does a quick pep talk every Tuesday, but they're on her Facebook page. So they're, they're all there. You could just go five minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. And they have all been like every week. It's like uncanny how what she tar starts to talk about is like specifically applicable to that particular day of my life. <laughs> it's very strange. Um, but I just, I like where she comes from and how real she's just real. She's just a real mom trying to do her thing. And um, so I think that's pretty cool. And, but she has good messages and she's very entertaining. So I love her quick pep talks. I love it. Yeah. For new people, um, finding ways that you can put a training on when you're doing something else. Most of us are moms or dads. And so if you're washing dishes, folding laundry, taking a shower, you don't have to see the training necessarily. You just, it needs to get into your mind. And so that I, was a tip that I wish I would have known at the beginning. Because I'm like, how am I going to find time? I need, I need to know stuff, but how am I going to find time? 
Yeah. I do that every Wednesday morning. I listen to Allison Dahlke's online steps. I just put it on my computer and I go about my day doing my stuff and she's there. Mm -hmm. So online steps for success is a uh, superstar director, Allison Dahlke and her husband. And um, they have a group that's open to everybody. And so seek them out. Good and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And Allison's a big reader as well. Most Ellen of my books came from her recommendations. Mm -hmm. Did and you watch the uh, the one the other day where she she had her flip chart that she had written? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! I am. I gotta go so put Christopher bad. to bed. Okay. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for sharing. So she had a flip chart, and she yeah. So what she ultimately what she was doing is she was explaining the um, compensation plan but she was showing um, like how you get paid and um, the benefits of sponsoring. Um, and at first she, she goes, don't panic. You know, like it's not like, you know, when you're a lead consultant and you're gonna get that two, you know, that 2%. <laughs> she goes, it's really worth it, hang on. It was, it was <laughs> cute. Um, and, and so she went through the whole thing and, and, sh and the, um, showed like, um, you know, like you're a rock star, you're going to do 2000 a month and, you know, showed how you get a bonus. And then she showed up through, she actually ended up, she hadn't planned on it, but she, she showed through superstar director and showed how, when you have, you know, multiple directors and then they have people under them and she showed the whole, it was amazing. She had little stick figures and, um, what your pay would be. And like, it was like, I was like, oh my God, like, I know how the compensation plan works, but like we actually figured out a paycheck and I'm like, I want that paycheck. Like it was really cool. It's possible to watch. Um, so it was fun. But so normally when you see a paper flip chart, you're going to, it's going to go like this and you're going to flip it over like this. <laughs> she had it sideways. <laughs> it was going like this. It was like a book. So, so part of it was following like this. And she's like, <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. She's like, where's, where's Brian <laughs> when I need him? But it was real and it was good. And, you know, um, but yeah, so it was, it was, I liked it because, um, you know, like I said, I know. Is Heather's chair moving? Yep. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, she's got a ghost <laughs> in her office. Um, might be a like dog said, that we can't see. It was stuff that, you know, I knew, but even, you know, going through the process of something that I wouldn't, you know, I'm a director, so I, I don't know a paycheck above mine. Um, but to look at it on paper and say, okay, that's, that's what I want. You know, that's what I want next. Um, so that was nice, but yeah, so that's one of the ones that I try to catch. Uh, on a regular basis. And like Heather said, I'll put it on and I'll do something else. I might, I don't know, I might be putting it in order. I might be folding my laundry. I might be, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. I try to catch that for a regular training too. You had a ghost in your office. Your chair spun around. I'm talking and all of a sudden your chair's moving. And I'm like, <laughs> what the? Just the dog. <laughs> that's what I that's said, what I said. <laughs> <Be a dog. laughs> she was sitting in the chair behind my butt and when I got up she did too oh, okay. <laughs> well once she realized I was gone she got up <laughs> it got cold in the chair yeah. it freaked me out <laughs> <laughs> well anyway. it's 9 41 hold on I'm gonna unmute Willistine she probably doesn't even know that Hey, Willisine, are you still there, honey? Yeah. <laughs> so I had muted you because I heard some background noise, and I'm like, that was probably pretty rude of me because I don't know that I explained to her how to unmute. <laughs> what, were there any questions that you had for us? Um, we had slotted until 930, and I want to make sure that if there was questions that we were able to answer them for you. Hey. 
It was a loud noise outside my house. Uh-oh. <laughs> the moose. <laughs> oh, no, the deer. Oh, no, she's good. I'm going to turn on the outside light so whoever that is outside knows that I'm home. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this Zoom has been pretty much tailored to the new people. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty cool because you never know what people are going to need. And we here as leaders, it's important for us to, to take care of the needs. Because, it, well, even when I go to a party, I might have a plan for that party. However, rarely goes away. That's right. That's right. It, <laughs> there, it is its own entity, you know? And I want to, everybody that comes adds something new and a new twist to it. So um, I'm okay to go with the flow. For people who are like, Straight and narrow, I would have a hard time with that. <laughs> All right. So thanks, everybody who's been on. Thank you very much, Joelle and Heather, um, for sharing your, oh, and Danielle, who's gone now, but for sharing your awesomeness because it takes all of us right we all have our own talents and the things that we're good at and when you put us all together we're pretty mighty force so um if you haven't signed up for reunion there's still time and it's going to be freaking amazing if you didn't know it we are in our summer incentive it started in february and you have until the end of july to earn an all expense paid trip for one or two to cancun mexico and that is really all about you if you want to know more about that check out the incentive tab on your workstation um it is the 24th we have one week left of april holy smokes so i would say to you what are you going to do? And this is rhetorical. Um, what are you going to do um, for this next week to impact your April paycheck that you're going to get the 10th of May? Because it's all up to you. You can do it. And if you need help, we are here. Did I miss anything in wrapping up? Okay. Thanks so much. I'm going to stop the recording. Where is it? Stop recording. There it is.